there were so many war games in the north. Loyal Arrow, Cold Response, Nordic Meat. Why? Why are they there? So, we invited Professor Yuri Morozov to speak about how Russians consider the situation up in the north, in the Arctic. Because there are something due to the global warming that is gradually developing a dangerous situation due to the resources up there. So, Mr. Yuri Moroso, okay. nice to see you, wonderful to have you here. The floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> First of all, I uh, want to thank the organizers of Folk who invited me to this international conference and very express what you are doing. As Agneto remind me, my name is Yuri Morozov. You can call me Yuri like Gagarin. Uh, I am professor of several scientific national international organization, and my area of history interests are analytic of inter international stability, military conflicts, and peacekeeping activities. I was born in Rostov on Don in 1951, as that is not so far from the. Uh, Black Sea, and uh, now I'm living in a Moscow big city with a population of 12 million strong. I am grandfather of five years old a boy named Klim, who is a very lovely and wonderful child, and for whom I'm working hard for preserve peace now and for the future. In that regard, of my first part of presentation, I wish to say a few words about Russian concerns, what is going on in Europe, and later I will um, discuss what is going on uh, in geopolitical area in the Arctic region. Uh, but uh, first I was also to mention that it's my first visit to Sweden, though our countries are rather close. My impression is that it's a very beautiful country with friendly and open people. Because, like in different kinds of mass media, there are a lot of rumors that Scandinavia is a little bit frozen, etc., etc. It was totally wrong. I never see so open, <coughs> friendly people who has uh, making jokes, understand jokes. It shows that <laughs> they have a brain. Um, you know, I came from the huge country, named nowadays Russian Federation. Uh, still, that is a country the biggest of the world, covering more than one uh, eighth of the uh, world's landlords. The country extends across the whole northern Asia and 40% of Europe as well. If you take a flight from St. Petersburg to Vladivostok, Vladivostok in Russian means uh, east. It takes 12 hours. That is what? It takes flight from here to New York and you are still in the same country. In many ways, Russia and Sweden are similar. Your country, like mine, has forest mountains, big green fields, and we are both people with uh, about the same inspiration and we have a common history. You know that this autumn, uh, this August will be the uh, 200th anniversary of the last Russian-Swedish war. Sweden has never been at war since then. These 200 years make peace and good neighborhood. In the north of the Sweden, there is still a monument devoted to the war. In one communal grace, Russians and Swedish are burned together. On a gray stone, it is inspiration that death equal all. Russia is, you know, Russia is a rich country, not only uh, by oil and gas, but other resources. It also has the world's largest forest resources, and it lays contain approximately one quarter of the world's fresh water. You know, that is another problem which will be covered uh, uh, the world in the near future. 
And ma many countries has been interested in invading Russia to get uh, hold of these riches. Some examples, as you know, uh, Chinggis Khan, Mongolian Imperator, Karl the Twelve, Sweden, Napoleon, ethnic coalition, Hitler, etc. The fact that the Europe and US lack of oil and gas resources has made Russia even more important in the modern time. I was born only six years after the Second World War. In Russia we call Great Patriotic War. The Nazi invasion in our country has a horrifying experience. We lost 27 million people, three times the whole population of Sweden. 25 million were made homeless. In 1945 our country was in ashes, in ruins. In every family there are still grievances of loss uh, of a family member. Every year on May 9th we celebrate the victory over Nazis. There is an important tradition of our country. Then when a couple of got married, they pay a visit to the war memorial. We have a lot of them in our country. And play their wedding bucket on in a hall in a horror of those who offered their life in the war against fascism. When the war was over, we had a hard time to build up all the bombed and uh, burnt houses, schools, hospitals, railway station, power station, etc. Women were working hard to rebuild desolated cities and villages. After the war, there were only 31 million men and 53 million women over the age of 18. We were able to solve this problem and we are proud of being able to restore our country. People had hopes for a peaceful future and we wanted to use our resources in making life better for all of us. The terrible thing is that the West, who has been our alliance in defeating the Nazis, changed their policy. And you know the Cold War started. NATO, as you remember, NATO was created in 1999 against, 49. Oh, sorry, 49, against maintenance from the Soviet Union, they said. How can be maintenance? We were trying to rebuild our country. And Warsaw Pact was formed only in, one, in 1953. Now again, we had a, to put much of our resources and brains and work into arm race and protect ourselves. The call was uh, ended in 1989 and the Warsaw Pact was dissolved. But to our dismay, NATO prevailed and expanded. The alien forces will no, not move one inch to the east, said President Bush the Elder to the President Gorbachev when they discussed uh, the unification of the Germany. Germany's Councillor Kohl and Britain's Prime Minister Major gave the same promises. And you all know what was happened. Russia is now almost totally surrounded by NATO armed forces. The US has bases in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland. They develop uh, is a grave threat to the Russian national security. security. And now, how East and West trust each other after such threat? The war on Yugoslavia in 1999 was an example of how NATO was launching a war for human resources, uh, resources, and they said, and break up the country into s small precedents which are completely accountable to the Western leaders. These actions were what many military analytic thought a uh, referral for the breakup of Russia and conventioning it. But before the US attack, this country's number of nuclear weapons has to be lowered. The US will never attack a country which has a certain number of nuclear weapons. See, for example, was uh, the attack on Afghanistan, Iraq, on Libya. None of these countries has a uh, procession of nuclear weapons. What is the most allowing for the Russia is installation of so-called national mis missile defense around Russia perimeter. I, I, I just say that is a warning uh, signal for us because Agneta in detail will explain what is going on 
And now you know that is a, on debate European uh, uh, part of the national uh, uh, defense. Uh, <clears throat> these installations are said to be uh, defensive system against missiles launched from Iran. But we can perfectly understand that these arrangements can be used in offensive aim of, at Russia. It is extremely dangerous for us. This will cause a rethinking from our side about nuclear weapons and the START treaty. Because further deployment of the US missile defense system in Europe gives Russia the right to withdraw from the new strategic arms reduction treaty. That is our concerns uh, about situation uh, in general uh, uh, in Europe and how it links uh, to the nearest uh, history, to, to our history. But uh, I was invited to talk about the geopolitical situation in the Arctic region. As I have said in the beginning, the West has a high uh, consumption of, of energy and doesn't have enough oil wheels or gas in their needs. They look disparately around the world for more energy. The war uh, on Iraq and now on Libya has all as underlying reason. But the perfects of uh, invading these countries were, of course, humanitarian uh, reasons. Now the West looks on the North for more energy. The Arctic region has uh, an array of stock of hydrocarbonates, but also convenient transcontinental sea and air routes. The use geolo uh, geological service estimates there are more than 20% of the world reserves of the hydrocarbonates under the ice cap. The Arctic shelves can therefore become an important and even the basis source of the hydrocarbon raw materials in the world. There are also considerable deposits of various ores, including rare earth metals. Last but not least, the area holds the world's largest biodiversity, including a concentration of more than 150 kids of fish, some of which play an important role in the world fishing. The Arctic region is also an important military strategic value. Here it is a convenient position for launching ballistic missiles on also system for anti-missile defense, for early detection of the rocket attack and other elements of the system of strategic restraint which are important for national security. Though so this region there will be the shortest the passage by sea and air connecting the North America and Europe, eastern and western areas of Euro-Asian contingent. By 2050, the ice will become 30% thinner, thinner and the volume will decrease by 15-40%. Due to this change, the military and navy forces will be able to operate in the Arctic during this significant, significant portion of the year. So, the Arctic region attracts international attention and this leads to confrontations between nations and group interests. There is now debates going on between states about who will share influence over the region. The military activities escalate. This presents problems and challenges to international stability. For example, when the Russian flag was planned by a scientific ship of the sea Bond in the north, a debate around the Western rose in Western mass media. One of the arguments was the Russia around to invade the Arctic region. But for me, the most dangerous problem of stability in Arctic is its militarization. It is known that U.S. has constitutional operation on high latitudes and Washington can provide for its military supremacy over other actors of the polar areas. Uh, as an example, Russia Chukotka region is unprotected by expanding US Alaska horizon. Could we, show that? Could we show that? Yeah, that is here. It is known that there is uh, 54 military bases. Three, the largest of them, belongs to the Air Force and three to the Army. 
the total strength of the military forces are 54,000 people strong. It it's, should be actually on, the, on that side, yeah, but, but it is there because you can see it's close to Russia. Uh, in that regard, uh, Russian Chukotka looks like a naked lady on a beach, you see, because everything in comparison with the numeral strength is, uh, is not to, to be compared. Uh, I have told uh, that, uh, in addition, I must say that U.S. Air Force and submarines which patrol the Arctic Ocean carrying high-precision weapons can destroy Russian submarines and bombers in case of military conflict. The U.S. Department of Defense prepares the Army for operation in Arctic. For example, three years ago, Black Hawk helicopters were adopted for operation in this area. It is also known that the U.S. Consider the possibility of additional patrol ships and uh, anti-submarine defense and assault operation in its Arctic military operation. Canada also in intends to build two uh, uh, di uh, divisions with patrol uh, uh, ships that will be added to the 17 Can Canadian icebreakers already guarding its borders. Ottawa Range Force is a ranger division formed by the Inuit people. By 2012, this range force will consider 5,000 people. In 2008, commissioners of the European Union have prepared a joint report in which they have worried about the danger of possible conflicts for European Union member states in Arctic region. The Secretary General of NATO has expressed that it still be necessary for the Alliance to expand military presence in the Arctic uh, as the global warning will be case the melting of the ice. Even Scandinavian countries had declared plans for creating a military bloc of its own. It will include Denmark, Iceland, Norway and even Finland and Sweden, for two last mentioned are not members of NATO. This association purchased security methods in the Arctic region. This means constant patrol of the Arctic zone and airspace. Sweden and Finland have both policy of non allegement until recently. They declared their association purchase the aims security maintenance in the Arctic region. For this purpose, they plan to organize constant patrol of the Arctic and airspace up to the Iceland. It is not clear, however, what interests Sweden and Finland have to join the Scandinavian bloc as they are not bounding the Arctic region? But the main aim of any military bloc is preparation for carrying out the use of military actions. The most effective will belong to the Air Force and Navy. The total strength of the new Nordic bloc will be about 600 warships and boats plus 600 combat aircrafts. The Arctic orientation for the military bloc, as well as orientation against Russia, is obvious. So, could you say again what's the name of this bloc or group? Uh, well, uh, well, I can explain. In London in January, um, David Cameron invited Norway, Sweden, Denmark, even the Baltic states, he didn't mention that, and uh, the whole Nordic, including Iceland, to form a sort of a mini NATO. Uh, and it's very, it's, it's very rare, it's very seldom discussed, but they have had several meetings and Arctic is mentioned among why they have formed this, um, what they call it, they don't call it a mini NATO, it's the anal analysts who say it is a sort of a mini NATO, but it's going on, this Nordic bloc to go around that Sweden and Finland are not NATO members. Uh, I, will call, I, will I will give you the proper name a little bit later. It's written you see, in additional uh, papers. <coughs> uh, so, I will continue. Moscow still considers the exp uh, expansion of NATO headed by the US as a rare error. The alien's military ac activism in Arctic is in fragment of Russia's security. National interests on one part, West, are reached by means of the infringement of national interests of another part, Russia. 
Brussels calls to increase in NATO military presence in the Arctic. The mutual district is growing between Brussels and Moscow in the absence of accurate rules which could provide stability in the Arctic region with joint efforts. Under these constant contradictions, Russia plans to create a grouping of the armed forces in the Arctic region which will provide security for the Russian Federation Arctic Zone in various military political conditions. So you see, first step are made by uh, Western uh, military bloc. And Ra Russia ought to be react. In, in that result, situation in the region are growing. Another step, another answer, and aggravation of tension will be steady, steady, and rapidly growing. Right now, the Arctic is relatively stable, but if this region will be divided by power, we cannot exclude a scenario where the conflict, including tactical nuclear weapons, could occur. In addition to this scenario, the Arctic has additional Russian concerns. Exciting contradictions between subarctic states. A lot of examples you know perfectly. There are problems of differentiation of the Arctic shelf, transarctic uh, transportation, etc. We should not forget about the environment challenges, which are, cannot be considered especially national or regional, as they are they consider of the global tenses. Russia seriously considers environmental challenges and their impact on policy. We see the beginning of the serious Arctic race, a battle for Arctic. We see the militarization of this region. We see the ambitions of, in this process, countries which today are not a part of Arctic agreement. And who is the initiator of that process? As an example, in the US national strategy, central issues are the growing value of the Arctic region, not only for the national economy, but for the military purpose. The main question is, who will be the main actor in that region? Who will take part in exploitation of the Arctic zone? As you know, we have an Arctic agreement. Eight countries are part of this agreement. The Russian Federation considers that the Preconditions so for military advantageous cooperation with the Arctic is the goal, based on already reached agreements. The preliminary goals of the international cooperation in the Arctic region can be international legal registration of borders of possession of the region according to the United Nations Convention on Marine Law of 19, 1982. Maintenance of peace and stability in the region, based on the decision of nature protection and other problems in Arctic zone with joint efforts. Organization for transit flight in the Arctic region and use of the Russian Northern Seaway for the international navigation. The creation of uni uniform regional system of search and rescue and also to prevention technogenic accidents and liquidation of his uh, consequences, including coordination of activity of rescue forces. According to a survey of Uppsala Uni University, there are 17 military conflicts on our planet. Uh, they are connected to struggle for independence or to s the struggle for the natural resources. The most cases of this conflict involve states which reach energy resources with Western countries need to their economy. Too many of these scenarios have a direct relation to NATO led by US reactionary forces. In many of these scenarios, Russia will be involved if they want or not. The conflicts of today are far from Scandinavia, except for the Arctic region. But the consequences are not told to the public. The modern world is rapidly globalized, and there is no place where we can say we are unsafe. This conflict will reach each person, whatever he lives. As former military observer, I am a veteran of war in Afghanistan, in Balkans and in Caucasus. I have experience of NATO's so-called 
peaceful military activities in the Balkan in Georgia. I hope that nobody, any one of you, will have the terrible experience of the future of receiving a letter which tells that one of your relatives is dead in war. Therefore, as a peacekeeper, as a grandfather, as a military analyst, I argue the participation of the conference to join efforts to stop military preparation at national and international level and not to permit that any conflict is solved by war. It must be the prime mission as citizen of the Earth. We should not allow Arctic to become another hotspot on our globe. And what shall be done in such alarm situation? We must try together to find the answers. That is, our, uh, that is why our conference is so important. Thanks again for arriving uh, and thank you for your attention.